Substitution, um, and you want to start thinking about the inside function. So, like on this, can you see what the inside function is? Yeah, it's the function in a function. If you know the chain rule, then you should be able to recognize that this is the inside function. So that would be my u substitution. And on your homework today, you have to pick the u substitution. So just like we did uh, on Friday, and you should have done on your homework, what do you do after you have your u value? You take the derivative, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative and move the dx over at the same time. So the derivative of 4x plus 2 is just 4, and I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by dx. So what do I need to do to that in order to make it match up? So I can substitute in. Yeah, there's no 4 outside over here, so I need to divide by 4. And that would be like saying 1 fourth du equals dx. And on some of these, you probably can kind of figure it out without much of a u substitution. Uh, but that's the process every time. So now I can go back over here and I can replace this with u. And dx is equal to 1 fourth du, so I can replace the dx with du, and I'm always going to put that constant out front because it doesn't affect my integral. Now this one is kind of like what we just talked about on 73. We kind of already know where we're going with this, but I want to show you where that integral comes from. Um, we don't know the integral tangent off the top of our head unless you go back and look at the answer to number 73. Can I rewrite tangent as a quotient? Yes. What if I wrote it like this? As sine of u over cosine of u. I don't know the integral of that off the top of my head either, but what I've done is I've made a problem that I can now do another substitution. And how do you know what to pick? And this is the part that you're going to have to figure out on your homework today. Sometimes it's just trial and error. If you see two functions, especially in a quotient, um, one of them is probably going to be your u value. Um, we can try one or the other. You have to get the derivative to match up. So let's think about it. If we pick this as our u value, what's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine, right? So that, that could work. If we pick sine as our u value, what's the derivative of sine? But that cosine's in the bottom, I don't think that's going to work. So let's try this. We've already picked u, so we need to pick another letter. So I'm going to pick um, v. Why? Because it's next to u, but you pick whatever you want. So now we're going to do another substitution. Let me learn right here. Double substitution. Exclamation mark. So now I'm going to pick v to equal cosine of u. And we should have not picked V because V's and U's look alike, but. So if I take, do this again, if I take the derivative of cosine, I would get negative sine of U, DU. Does that match up perfectly? Almost. What do I need to do? Move that negative over, so that would be negative dv equals sine of u du. So make sure you put a tail on your u, so you can tell the difference between your u's and your v's. So that's not a correct 
what do I have over here if I do my substitution? The cosine is not there anymore, right? Because cosine of u is now v. So can I just put a v on the bottom? Yeah? What about this? Sine of u du. Can I just replace that with negative dv? And you can put the dv over here, or you can put it up here. It doesn't matter to me. But if I put it up here, I'm going to stick that negative out front again because the negative really means nothing to the problem right now. Can you integrate that? What is the integral of, if you prefer, you can write that as 1 over v dv. What is the integral of 1 over ln? Ln, right? That's where the ln comes from in that tangent problem. Do I have the integral of tangent memorized? No, I remember there's ln in it. This is how I work it out. So now I can say negative 1 fourth. This is the ln of v. Technically speaking, when you take the integral and you get ln, you're supposed to put absolute value bars around it, because you can't take the ln of a negative number. Plus v. If you take a double substitution, you have to go back and substitute back in two times. Make sure you get back to x. So, um, what did v equal? What did u equal? Four x plus two. And that would be your answer. Does that show up very often? No. But it could show up. So just remember that if you see a trig function that we don't have an integral for, um, there's probably going to be a substitution where you have to change it to a quotient and then do a little substitution from there. That's exciting, right? Hopefully you get like Ellen of one in here. <laughs> Alright, let's do this one. That's how you know that your u is wrong. But on this one, if we take u to equal x squared plus 1, we should be able to take the derivative of that and be able to just move some numbers around. If you ever need an x in a problem, then that means that you've picked the wrong u because you're not allowed to just put an x in a problem the way that you're allowed to just throw in like a 1 fourth to move it over. Um, so do you agree that this is going to equal 2x dx? This is one that uh, does work. Remember, think about 21 that we just talked about from the homework. If this x wasn't on the top and it was just a 1, do you see that that would be um, our tangent? Because it's a square plus a, a perfect square with nothing on top. But since there's an x on top, it's not our tangent. Because when we make this our u, that works, right? We have that x and that dx. And so this is why you need to know our tangent, because it's very easily confused with a question like this. Um, what do I need to do with this? Divide by 2. So that it's just x dx that I'm replacing with 1 half du. And make sure you plug it in the right spot. Don't just write u there. U's on the bottom. So we're going to get like 1 over u, 
and then all of this is equal to one half du. And again, I'm always going to put that one half out front. That's fine. It's the same thing. And then what is the integral of one over u? Ln of u. And so you're going to see a lot of ln's. But again, see how closely this is related to number 21 from your homework from Friday. It could have been an arc tangent very easily. But then it's just knowing this is ln of u plus c. And I'm totally okay. Every time you're going to replace u back in it, if you want to save a line of paper, automatically replace back in what u was. Uh, and in this one, Back of the book wouldn't put absolute value bars around that. Why not? It's never going to be negative, and so that's why sometimes you'll look in the back of the book, they won't have absolute value bars. Um, multiple choice question on AP test, this wouldn't have absolute value bars around it. They wouldn't give you one with absolute value bars, too, to make you pick which one it was, but I just want to show you that that's why sometimes they don't have absolute value bars. The real key part for this, I feel like, is recognizing those U values, and that's where you just have to kind of practice them. Um, what else could we do with this? What if we throw some bounds in there and make this a definite integral instead of an indefinite integral? We can still do the whole u substitution part. Then the, at the end, we just have some options here. And that's why I want to kind of go through a couple of those with you. Again, before you shout out that what you think you did, look at that and try to see if you can see like an inside function. Your U value should never be something that you need to do the chain rule on to take the derivative of. So that's another hint. Um, when you're taking your U value, try to take something that's just like the, the innermost function. But I can tell you it's not, U is not the square root of 2x squared plus 1 because then that would be a chain rule problem. So make sure your U value is always something that doesn't need the chain rule to take the derivative of it. And again, my advice to you on your homework tonight is don't just like stare at it and be like, I don't know, I'm just going to quit and not do it. Try something. Pick your U, take your derivative, and see if it matches up. And there's a good chance it might just match up um, so that you can get it to work out. So do you agree that that would be 4x dx if I multiply that dx over? And how can I be confident that I picked the right U? Well, because it seems like all I got to do is move that 4 over and then the, the pattern matches up. And so that's what you're kind of looking for. That's the, the good thing about the U substitution problems is you know if you pick the wrong U. Because if you pick the square root of 2x squared plus 1 and you try to match that up, it's going to be a big giant mess. So if I divide that 4 over, I'm going to get 1 fourth du equals x dx. Now here's where you have choices, okay? Do you agree, since there's bounds here, my answer, I'm not going to have to actually go back in terms of x. Like, my answer is just going to be a number. That's the difference between when there's bounds and when there's no bounds. Like, my answer is going to be the actual area under that curve, which is going to be some number, like 17, or something much uglier than that. Yes? So when you're doing u substitution, if you want, we can change our bounds in terms of u, and then we never have to go back to x. And so I'm going to show you that, and then I'll show you the alternative if you don't want to do that. So underneath here, I'm going to write, let's change our bounds. You don't have to write this on every problem. I just like to have some notes here, so if you wonder where this comes from. Right now, our bounds are in terms of x. So right now, x is equal to 0, right, is my bound and x is equal to 4. Since I know that u equals 2x squared plus 1, can I just plug this bound into my u value and I could get what u equals when x equals 0? So when x equals 0, I'm going to show some work on this one, u equals 2 times 0 squared plus 1. 
or u just equals 1. And I can do the same thing on this one. If x equals 4, then u is going to equal 2 times 4 squared plus 1. Which would be, um, that's a really big number. 16 times 2 is 32 plus 1 is 33. So not only am I going to change my problem this in terms of u, I can change my bounds in terms of u also. So now I can go back and replace everything in terms of u. So instead of from 0 to 4, I'm going to do this from 1 to 33. What am I going to have on the bottom of that? Just u. Square root of u, right? u is just 2x squared plus 1. So I have the square root of u. And uh, let's go back up here. x dx is equal to 1 fourth du. I can replace all of that with 1 fourth du. I'm going to take the 1 fourth out front because I don't need it. I'm going to integrate that just like I've been integrating it, but now I have those bounds there, so I have to do that f of b minus f of a in the fundamental theorem of calculus. I'd be better writing this as u to the negative one half. And how am I going to integrate that? Add one and divide by that, right? So what if I add one to uh, negative one half? What do I get? I get u to the one half, and when I divide by one half, that's the same as, so I'm just going to multiply by two out here. Not going to put a plus c, because I'm going to integrate that from one to 33. The alternative to this is, don't change your bounds. Could you go back and plug in what u was in terms of x? and then do your original bounds? You can. I feel like this is usually less work, um, and so I like to do it this way, but you don't necessarily have to change your bounds uh, when you're doing this. Uh, two times one fourth, that's just one half, right? And I would get the square root of 33 minus one half times the square root of one. You agree with that? F of B minus F of A? Um, if this was reducible, especially on a multiple choice, they're going to make you reduce it. Um, but it's not reducible, so I'm just going to leave that as the square root of 33 over 2 minus 1 half, and I'll just leave it like that. Don't leave the square root of 1 as the square root of 1. It drives me insane. You could, if you like, common denominator. You could write it all like this, right? All of that is equal to the same thing. Whatever you like. feel about that? It's still all about picking that u value, but you have to change your bounds too. Let's see if we can do one more. Trade, our favorite. chain rule, like you have to bring the two out front, and you're never going to pick that, which means you're either going to pick tangent, or you're going to pick secant. Let's try one. Which one do we pick? I really think they both work on this one. <laughs> if you pick secant as your u, 
not secant squared because secant squared is a chain rule problem. What is the derivative of secant? Secant x tangent x. Does that work? Does that match up? If I broke this secant squared up and wrote it as secant x times secant x, does that match up? It really does. Um, just a little side note, we won't do this both ways. What if you pick your u to be tangent of x? What's the derivative of tangent of x? A <laughs> fly just attacked me. <laughs> it was like buzzing on my in my shirt. <laughs> oh my god! The derivative of tangent of x is secant squared x. Do you agree that that also matches up? <laughs> Like buzzing around. Yes, it terrified me. So just so you know, both of those work on this one. But we'll go with what we picked, okay? Um, let's change around. Yes. Some lovely traits here. If I plug in negative pi fourths here, I'm going to get secant of negative pi fourths. Oh my goodness. Um, secant is 1 over cosine. And at negative pi fourths, it's still positive because it's x and it's just square root of 2 over 2. Right? So it's 1 over square root 2 over 2? Square root 2 over 2. Or 2 over square root 2. Or. <laughs> That's a whole lot of work. Yes, thank you. Or just square root 2. Um, what about if I, if x is 0, what is the secant of 0? Yeah, because it's a 1 over cosine of 0, and cosine of 0 is 1. So my bounds are going to change from the square root of 2 to 1. Just so you know, you don't have to, remember how normally this is always a smaller number, this is always a bigger number? That's always in terms of x. When you change your bounds in terms of u, sometimes this is going to be bigger than this, like in this case. Don't switch it around, don't put the negative out there, because it's in terms of u and not in terms of x. Uh, what else am I going to get here? Yeah, I forgot my gift, sorry. Which means secant x, tangent x, dx, so this... And this is all just my du. Do you agree with that? And then u is just secant x. Well, wait. Does this have much easier to integrate? Yeah. And this is one where I think it's much easier to integrate without changing back in terms of x because you would just get u squared over 2 from the square root of 2 to 1, and you just plug that in and you can work that out. Right? I need to find Sam's office, please. I need Nikki York. I'm going to go to your own. Sam Johansson, Brayden Bryan, Campbell oh Dawson, God. Daniel Bishop, Tasha <laughs> Kelly. Can I hey, meet the office, please? This is 6 2 day 2. Catch up on your homework if you didn't do it this weekend. This is really important stuff. Way more important than English.
Sarah watches these uh, notes. <laughs>